All right, so you want to know how I do my Amazon FBA retail arbitrage business here in New York City? Well, this is the video you don't want to miss. In this video, I will cover the pros and cons of starting your own Amazon RA business in a major city. And by the end of this video, you'll understand the struggles and how to overcome them so that you can do it too. Hi, my name is Cam. I've been doing Amazon for over three years now. I quit my Wall Street job just so I can do this. So there is money here to be made. Um, don't sleep on it. Before I jump into the pros and cons of starting your own Amazon FBA business in a major city, I wanna talk about the mindset you need to really make you successful in this realm. I can't stress enough about how important mindset is because that really helped me push through all these struggles that I'm about to tell you. So the mindset I want you to have today is, understand this quote from my mentor, Tony Robbins, it's not the lack of resources, it's the lack of resourcefulness that's stopping you from doing whatever you're trying to achieve. So what does that mean? It means even though I live in a big major city, it doesn't mean that I can't start Amazon, right? I can find the resources. What this quote means is not that there's not enough resources for you to succeed, it's that you're not being resourceful. Another way to see this is like, in life you're dealt with the certain cards, like certain hand of cards, and instead of complaining and, and whining about, oh, I don't have the ace of spades, I can't do X, Y, Z, then focus on what you do have in your hand. I mean, sometimes you could be holding a king of spades and that's just as good. What I mean by this mindset is, I can complain all day that I don't have X, Y, Z in the city, but I do have A, B, C. So I wanna focus on the things I do have. So whether you're starting a business in a major city or not, there are some pros and cons and the best thing you can do is press into that pro. So without further ado, let me jump into the five pros of your own Amazon FBA business here in New York City or any city that you live in. Well, the first pro is that there's a lot of stores in the major city and they're very close by. So starting out in Amazon FBA retail arbitrage, I sourced in a lot of Marshalls, a lot of TJ Maxx, uh, possibly Target, and even five below. And the good thing about the city is that they're all very close by, sort of. They're like within a mile to two miles, maybe five miles max, and you, you can access another store. That's a good thing about the city. And I get lucky because I just find a route that I really enjoy and I just hit like five marshals in a span of like two, three hours. The second pro is that it's close to home. I mean, sometimes when you don't live in a city, you have to drive, I don't know, an hour, two hours away just to access certain stores. But for me, because I live in New York City, um, it's just close by, it's very convenient. Like they say, if you want to do something, make it as conveniently as possible. For example, when we hit the gym, make that as convenient as possible. Same goes for business. Well, the third pro is there are less competition. What do I mean by that? I mean, even though we, in New York City is so many people and you would think that there are so many people doing retail arbitrage that there's no more like inventory for you. My, my way of thinking is if everyone thought that, then no one's going to do it. So therefore it's actually less competition because now you go like, oh, everyone did it already. I'm not going to do it. Therefore no one does it. And then when I actually show up and I start scanning for products, um, I don't see anyone else doing what I'm doing. So I think it's it's low competition in a major city. You'd be surprised because I feel like a lot of big retail arbitrage sellers I know, they don't live in major cities. They live in like the suburbs or like um, places that are have less population. And they have, well, we'll go into like the pros and cons about that, but in short, less competition. Number four, it's a great business to start on the side on top of my day job at the time or your day job um, when i started my amazon business i used to work on wall street and it was in the city so i can just after work i just took a train see a nearby marshall's or on the way home i would source so it's kind of convenient from from my day job going home i was able to start this business on the side so if you live in a major city that may work for you and the fifth pro is that i get to source while my family shops so at the time where I would go shopping with my family or my girlfriend or my fiance at the time, I would source while they shop. Self-explanatory, um, 
I'm not much of a shopper and instead of just sitting there and not doing anything while they shop, I get to shop, but for my business. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, enough of the pros, let's jump into the cons. What are the struggles that you may face when starting this business in a major city like New York? Well, first thing is there's no parking. It's just, there's just so many people here and there's like so many cars that it's hard to find parking, especially in New York City, Manhattan. For, for being a New York City resident, I built the patience and the, and the tenacity to find parking. So I wouldn't give up and I'm very aggressive when it comes to parking. Like if a spot opens up, I snag it right away. So for me, it's, it's doable. I, I sort of find a spot and sometimes it's very far away from like the marshals I'm going to. And, and chances are there are no free parking. You just have to pay meter. That's just the, uh, that's just the game. You have to pay the play, right? That's just uh, another expense I need to add to my business so that I can park as close as possible. So then when I bring the products into the car, it's not that long of a walk. Or I find those that do have parking lots. Like for example, some Brooklyn, some Queens, Marshalls or TG Maxx, they do have a parking lot. Um, it's rare, but when they do, I try to go there first and then if I have time, I'll hit the other stores that don't have parking. All right, the second con for starting a business, starting the Amazon business here in New York is that there are less inventory. So what I mean by that is because the, the physical store is smaller than the typical Marshalls like outside of the city, therefore they can't hold as much inventory. So when they stock up, they stock like one item or two item or maybe up to five to 10 units uh, per item. So it's when you find a winning product and you want a clear shelf, there's usually not that many units, which kind of sucks. But to counteract that, you simply have to hit more shops, hit more marshals because they're so close by. Say there's five marshals close by, I hit all five. And usually when you find the products that you want in the first marshals, chances are they carry the same products in the same, like in each store. So basically I clear the shelf in each store, therefore, you say you got like five here, five there, 10 there. At the end of your run, you'll have like 50 units. Um, whereas if you were outside of New York City in like a rural area, they might even have like 20 to 30 units for you to grab. But then you have to drive quite some time for the next store. The third con is there are very long lines because, because, because there are so many people in the city, therefore when they check out, the line is massive and sometimes even though they have so many cashiers, they don't have enough to meet the demand. So to counteract that, I usually go shopping or go sourcing with a partner, whether it's uh, my my wife at the time, well, fiance, wife, whatever, <laughs> or my brother or whatever. If you have like a colleague or a partner, you have that person line up while you source. And by the time that person makes it to the checkout, you're done sourcing and you cut your time in half. Or this is, gold tip right here get to know the manager you know if you say hi to this person or you make a relationship with them sometimes um they even let you skip the line like like for for example when i was sourcing back then in in marshalls and queens i would have like a coffin to call it like a big box full of products ready to be checked out and i just hang out in the front of the line and somehow the manager sees me and go like, hey, you know, come in here, I'll take care of you. Or like they, they, he, he or she puts aside two cashiers for me and checks me out on the side while they have a long line. So it's, you know, get to know the manager. They, they, they can really come in handy sometimes. And the fourth con I, I would like to add is if you don't live on the first floor, it's gonna suck. Cause you have to like luggage your stuff up the stairs or like if you don't have an elevator, um, that will suck because some apartments here, if you live in the city like I do, well, thankfully I had a house and, but the bad thing, I operate my Amazon business from the basement. So I'm always going downstairs and upstairs. So that's just annoying. You know, whereas if you live in the rural areas, everything is like on the first floor or your garage is on the first floor and there's no like staircase to deal with. But if you live in the city and you live in an apartment, you lug your products up and down, that may be a struggle. Um, I haven't really thought of a solution 
I just manned up and just carried it. I mean, there's no, there's no way around it. I mean, you can like install like a conveyor belt, but that's going to cost a lot of money. And I don't think that's actually uh, possible or feasible. Anything's possible. I just don't think it's cost efficient. So yeah, I just man up. I just carry up the stairs. So um, if next time, if you want to start this business and you're looking to move, you know, be mindful about a staircase. You want to stay at the first floor, like my coach. He, he lived in Florida when he did his Amazon business and he has his garage right right on the first floor. So he pulls all the products in when he brings back in his van and when he orders a UPS pickup, it's everything is on the first floor. It's very easy, no carry, no lifting. So think about that. All right, you made it to the end of the video. I want to give you a pro, pro tip for those who are serious about becoming an Amazon FBA seller in the city doing retail arbitrage. Get out of the city. <laughs> you know, city's hard. City has the ups and downs. Yes, focus on the good stuff about the city because about attacking multiple marshals close by, but also think about outside the city because you'd be surprised about how many sellers are right outside the city. There might not be many because for me, I source mostly in Jersey. Sometimes I go to Long Island and sometimes I go to Woodbury. So it's like a triangle. I hit like like maybe 10, 20 miles outside the city. Um, it's, it's a longer drive, but there's more inventory. So at the end of the day, it's like, how much do you really want it? How much do you want to make in the, in the Amazon business? And how much can you actually, like if you can drive further, you get more. And that's what the one thing I learned from my coach. Like he's like, drive further, just drive longer. Like for him, he drove three hours one time for a certain store that he really likes. And there's like a lot of units there. So like branch out, I guess. If you live in the city, branch out, hit the next state next to you, hit the next city after you. That's, that is it. If you want to make it in the city, you have to source in the city and also around the city. And it's a good tip for everyone who's selling in this, in this um, business, but particularly for people in the city. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That would really help me out as a young YouTuber. And like always, my goal is to provide as much value as I can that I am knowledgeable in and uh, wishing you the best and good luck on your business and have a beautiful day. Peace.